Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sean Boyd here in the Cal OES newsroom. If you have questions about the earthquake early warning system, I have two experts here who are going to answer a lot of those questions for you. That's coming up right now on Look Live Inside. Retake. That would be the inside look live right here at Cal OES. So with me right now is Deputy Director Christina Curry, who is with the Planning Preparedness and Prevention uh, Department or program, right? And then of course we have Ryan Arba, who is the Branch Chief of the Earthquake and Tsunami Program. So now we're gonna get right down to the nitty gritty here, okay? So California earthquake country, we all know that. Uh, we get little tremors here and there, little thing here and there. Yeah. Periodically we get the bigger ones. Uh, but your jobs are to make sure that California is prepared in so many different ways. So why don't we first of all talk about just briefly how each one of you uh, is involved in that process. Tina, why don't you go first? Well, as you indicated, we are at risk to lots of different kinds of disasters here in California. Earthquakes being the one we're talking about today, but certainly as we've seen recently, uh, fires, floods, um, all types of hazards. So we have to approach that as a state agency in terms of all the things we might be at risk to and how to best get ready. Um, so part of uh, my job is to look at all the hazards we have, figure out how to plan for those, figure out how to gauge other agencies that might help in um, those types of events to make um, those situations better for Californians. Right, that's a huge job. You can't do it alone and so that's why we have Ryan here. He's mm -hmm. one of your, your team members. So tell me about how it is that you help Tina with that whole process. Sure, um, well as Tina mentioned, uh, Cal OES has a very um, large mission and as part of that, uh, um, we know that earthquakes are one of the biggest risks that California faces. In fact, 77% of the country's earthquake risk resides here in Cal California. So um, as a result, we have a, uh, a team that's focused on reducing that risk for California um, through several different programs with a focus not only on earthquakes, but also tsunami threat, mm -hmm. um, taking a look at uh, how we can better prepare for volcanoes. And um, as part of that uh, overall earthquake um, uh, preparedness effort, we're um, investing and working uh, really hard to lift off this earthquake early warning system. For sure. Now this is a, a, a system that's been in the works planning stages mm -hmm. and now the beta stages for quite a while. Um, so tell me how long ago we first really kind of got started and kind of where we are now with this system. Well, I think it's important to note first that the earthquake early warning is is an augmentation of a of a system we already have, meaning right now and for a long time, I don't, Ryan maybe know exactly how far this goes back, we've been able to detect and provide real-time information about earthquakes, the magnitude where they're located, and that's really important for, if you think about a community, um, you may feel the shaking, but to know exactly where it occurred, where the worst shaking may have been, it really helps first responders to mobilize quickly. So earthquake early warning is being built upon that, and in the last several years in particular, Cal OES has taken an increasing role into making sure that we are gonna see this system to fruition. So, if you wanna add to that. Yeah, no, the, um that's uh, probably going back the last two decades or so, we've had the ability to report on earthquakes within about five minutes after the earthquakes mm -hmm. occurred, um, to the point where uh, not only we would know the location of the earthquake, but also um, the, the, foot, or the footprint of that shaking intensity so that first responders can know, hey, I can, they can take a look at a map. We've been able to send that out, again, about five minutes after the earthquake occurs so they can uh, prioritize their their response to the most needed areas, especially if there is any critical infrastructure or um, you know, uh, at-risk areas that they would want to, to focus on. So it's uh, that technology um, mm -hmm. that with additional investments, not only in, um, in the specific seismic instruments which track that technology, but also in the ability for that technology to communicate even faster. Mm -hmm. um, it has to communicate not only, you know, instead of waiting five minutes after, it has to communicate in real time for us to be able to send out these early warning alerts so we can protect even more people. So on February 16th of this year, Mexico City uh, endured an earthquake. Uh, the epicenter was roughly 225, 230 miles away. They still felt it was about a 7.2, I think it was. Mm -hmm. They have an earthquake early warning system, and there are a lot of people who have wondered, why don't we have a system ahead of them? 
wh mm. why is it that Mexico is ahead of us when we, we in California certainly could use a system like that? What's your answer to those people who say, why don't we have a system like that? Why is it taking so long? Well, we're working very hard to, to, to change that, but um, just the simple answer is it's very complicated in California. We have a lot of people, the geography, um, and just the way that earthquakes occur and sort of predicting where the best placement of the system will be in order to detect and, and, um, and help to prevent or avoid some of the harm that earthquake does. It's a much more complicated venture in California, not to minimize um, where, the, sure. where, you know, the, the, ex the risks el elsewhere, but that's part of it is um, we really have to have a lot of sensors in the ground um, in order to kind of build the, cal the system that California needs. And it's just different in other places, not the technology, but just sort of the requirements. Yeah, the geography. And yeah. So is there a similarity uh, to the system that we're beta mm -hmm. testing compared to the one that, they're, that they have now? The technology is very similar okay. in that, you know, Mother Nature actually produces the early warning and that P wave that um, comes in advance of the, of the actual ground shaking. It's really the, 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 what we put into place to detect it and communicate it rapidly enough to make a difference. Yeah, in Mexico's system, they, um, uh, both Mexico and Japan, two of their biggest threats exist off the coast. Of, of the um, of their country so since uh, the technology that Tina was talking about it's the difference between the initial burst of energy for an earthquake um, which uh, has very minimal ground shaking and then uh, another burst of energy follows which is where the shaking occurs and it's that difference that's our warning um, so in the Mexico City example with a specific fault line that's offshore and with over 200 miles before Mexico City uh, that translates into over a minute, if not closer to two minutes of warning time for Mexico Which City. Which is unbelievable. That's um, an unbelievable amount of time. However, most of the known large fault lines in California that we're really focusing on, we may not have that luxury. It may be um, closer to a few seconds. Right, but you could do a lot in a mm -hmm. few seconds with automation Certainly. as well, right? Yeah. Right. So uh, you guys are aware of this. There have been uh, many news reports uh, lately about the potential reductions in federal funding at the USGS for their earthquake hazards program. Is that going to impact our program at all? Because we work directly mm -hmm. with them. Any chance? We Any absolutely, chance? this has been a partnership with a lot of investment of science and, um, you know, funding. And, um, you know, it always has been the, the, the detection of um, earthquakes in real time has been a partnership that, so we do, we absolutely um, do not want to see this happen and hope that the federal government is able to continue to invest into this partnership. But certainly California is committed to build this system mm -hmm. for its, um, you know, for, for Californians and we've invested a lot ourselves. So um, one way or another, we're going to build this in California, certainly um, with hopes that it's in partnership with yeah. the federal government. We gotta forward. get it done, right? Yeah. Yeah. Something we have to do. Sure. Uh, okay, so we have some questions that we have um, that we have kind of gathered up uh, that we think that maybe you two could help kind of clarify okay. or demystify some of the uh, yeah. those elements with regard to the system. So one of the questions is that that we've had is there are some misnomers, okay, some mm -hmm. misunderstood parts uh, of California's earthquake early warning system. Uh, what are they specifically, and what would you like to kind of clear up? Well, I think one that um, for me is that what could what could we possibly do with a few seconds warning? Like, how can that make a difference? And we're often asked to explain that. And that's under a good question. Um, but um, certainly for the general public that we have educated to drop, cover, and hold on when they do feel ground shaking, that action would still be likely what they would take if there was a, a few seconds of warning. So that what they do doesn't change, but it really can be a lot of time, even just a few seconds, if you think about just the the you know kind of the human being's brain's ability to get information, anticipate it, and take that action really could make a difference and help them be safe. Um, but you touched on it earlier, the automated actions that could take place to make machinery safer, the things that we rely on um, that, um, you know, could be shut down or, or um, you know, um, stopped in some way that would, that really is, um, would make a great big dif difference in the case of an earthquake if we can detect it early. So with yeah. regard to the automation aspect mm -hmm, of it, sure. that, that implies that there needs to be some serious integration mm -hmm. between not only this system and, and what we do in terms of an alert, but also with the automation itself, mm -hmm. right? It seems like if you're gonna try and stop a train, mm -hmm. uh, the BART train, for example, yeah, it needs to be automatic. Yeah. It needs to happen without mm -hmm. someone going, oh, okay, now let's push mm -hmm. the button, yeah. right? Okay, so 
The next question I have is, you know, we know that scientists are involved in the project, but obviously a much bigger project than just the scientists. There's a coalition of a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. um, who else are we working with besides the USGS? Yeah, uh, first responders are uh, a big, so um, not only uh, us at Cal OES, we partner with other states and their emergency management agencies uh, to make sure that it's, you know, it's, it's not just about the science of getting the alert out, but it's about making sure that we're tracking the right metrics that the, to make sure that the system's effective. So not only are we getting the alert out, but are people taking the proper actions and are we applying it in ways that we're meeting our public safety goals to um, you know, save lives, reduce injuries, um, et cetera. Right. Um, so the shake alert system is the beta mm -hmm. system, right? This is the one we're testing, actively testing to make sure it's what we want, it's working the way mm -hmm. it's supposed to. Is this intended to be the, the final product? Yeah, that shake alert is what will evolve into the earthquake early warning system. That's the um, purpose of having the test, is to um, to see how it works, um, make changes, evolve it, so that it ultimately can be um, be what people receive as the as the early warning. So, so that testing is underway, and um, we would imagine that the final system will look and feel a lot like what shake alert does now. Okay, and. We know that there are sensors kind of scattered strategically all over the state and more are being installed as we speak. Okay. What about the locations? Are we, how are we choosing where these mm -hmm. sensors are going? Yeah, so the, um, the you know, an earthquake can happen anywhere. We, we have mm -hmm. uh, um, hundreds, if not more, uh, known fault lines, but really, um, uh, you know, they can start anywhere. So in order to really be prepared for a statewide system, we need to make sure that we are, um, blanketing the state with these instruments um, and that's uh, so while the the network in the past has focused more on the urban areas um, we're focusing on a statewide system uh, in order to be able to provide the capability for everyone the way that's being measured uh, is that in an urban area they'd be placed about six miles apart uh, in a rural area they could be placed at increments of at least 12 miles apart okay and that's going to give you the 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 data that you need mm -hmm quickly, efficiently, and uh, so that these systems can work the way they're supposed to, automatically shut those trains down and send out the warnings to whatever devices we're getting these things sure. on, right? Okay, yeah. so uh, when it comes to actually reacting, those of us who have to do it the old-fashioned way, mm -hmm. whether it's push a button or whether it's act ourselves, mm. it's important to know what to do when you mm -hmm. get those warnings. So mm -hmm. what should people do? if they get those warnings if uh, if it comes through as a beta test. Sure. So what do they do? Yeah, I could start. I mean, the, the message, uh, Tina alluded to this earlier, same thing uh, uh, in the world that we're looking at with and being able to receive an earthquake early warning alert in the world that we're in today. Today, what we train people is the moment you start to feel shaking to get as small as possible, we tell you to drop, cover, and hold on. Mm -hmm. So the idea is you want to protect yourselves because most of the injuries that occur during an earthquake, especially in the way our buildings are built, are from falling objects, broken glass, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, by taking that, that brief action, you'll do the best to protect yourselves and your family members. Uh, in an earthquake early warning world, hopefully we're giving you a quick alert and you'll not only uh, recognize that alert, but you'll also know that you can take that protective action prior to the shaking even beginning. Mm -hmm. So we should be able to uh, even further reduce those injuries um, that can occur. And with regard to the technology aspect of this, I think we all expect that warning to come right to our phones, mm -hmm. right? Because that's the way we get everything nowadays. All of these notifications yeah. come right to our phones. A lot of them we ignore. A lot of them we turn off. Sure. What would you say about the ability right now of the technology to get that warning to our phone in amount of time that we could actually utilize it? Well, that's definitely um, one of the more complicated features of this program is, is not the ability to get um, information to cell phones, but how fast it has to get there. So we're working very closely mm -hmm. with, um, with the partners, with the um, cell phone providers, you know, who understand that this is a capability that, that we're working towards in order to make that possible. But I think educating people as well, um, like you said, we get a lot of information on their phone. Um, it can be quite crowded um, with, with um, there's other warnings that come across, All like for weather and 
And so we have to have a robust um, campaign, if you will, to educate people about this, um, about this technology that's coming well before it actually starts showing up on people's phones so that they understand what it is, the, um, what to do, and um, what actions to take, and just what it means to get these warnings. Right, so for each of you, uh, Ryan, I'll start with you. Is there something that is one of the main messages that you get out whenever you talk to people, either casually or on a more official basis? What is the one thing that you want people to know when you talk to them? I would stick with our general earthquake preparedness message, which I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, we'd be, earthquake early warnings coming, it'll be a tool in the toolkit um, to help us uh, uh, protect ourselves, but there are things that we can do today, and I'd encourage everybody to um, take, a, take a moment out of their time, uh, see if they can uh, do anything today to say, um, strap uh, or, uh, you know, protect their bookshelves from falling, for example. There's many other things that we can do mm -hmm. in our own homes, at, in our offices, with our kids and, and at schools in order to prepare ourselves for the next earthquake. Right, a lot of folks out there still have those old CRT mm -hmm. televisions, those big, heavy yeah. 36 inches that weigh about 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. If you still have one of those, mm -hmm. good idea to strap that thing mm -hmm. to the wall if you haven't already. Yeah. Because if you have small children in the house, mm -hmm. they're sitting in front watching whatever it is they're watching, um, and then the quake hits, that TV could easily rattle off of that desk or whatever it is it's sitting sure. on and could seriously injure or kill mm -hmm. a small child. Yeah. So this is a good opportunity to be aware of that. Tina, how about you? Is there one particular um, message? It, it's, it is another tool in our toolbox. It's a very important advancement. If you think about um, earthquakes have been around um, probably longer than people have, and so we've lived with them um, and in society, but it's always been with the notion that they would come without warning. So this is really a big advancement, but again, like Ryan said, it's just a, it's something that amplifies what we would like ca all Californians to do, which is to be prepared. Um, disasters can happen, not just earthquakes, and, um, and there's important earthquake preparedness um, that they can do now that earthquake early warning will only um, improve um, our preparedness even more. For sure, so if you go to caloes.ca.gov, which is our website, a lot of really great mm -hmm. information that we have there. All you gotta do is do the keyword search, earthquake uh, preparedness, of course, ready.gov. Mm -hmm. uh, FEMA's site has a lot of really great information on how you could prepare, have your, your mm -hmm. kit, what can go into the kit, your family kit, each person should have a kit as well and a plan, where are you gonna go? If, uh, if you're separated and you know a big earthquake hits and, and your community is affected. Uh, any other quick little tips that you'd like to get out there before we wrap this up? Just thank Don't. you for the opportunity to share information about yeah. this. We're very excited yeah. about this um, endeavor and um, look forward to be able to talk more about it as, as, um, as it progresses. I would love to be able to sit here again mm -hmm. and be able to in a relatively short time and say this beta mm -hmm. system is now green lit, mm -hmm. it's the way it needs to be. It's live. It's yeah. live. Wouldn't that be, that, that'll be good. Sounds yes. great. So I Look guess that bears, <laughs> yes, that bears the question. What time frame do you think we're looking at here? It may be kind of tough to put a, a specific date, but are you looking uh, hopeful for a certain time frame? Yeah, our goal is, well, first of all, the state has invested in this um, mm -hmm. through the, the budget, um, um, and now again in the governor's budget for this year. So we're really um, um, hoping to continue to move this forward with putting the dollars behind it. And um, we hope by the end of 2018 that we have a, um, a rollout, it'd probably be limited, but, um, but, a, but a rollout of the life system um, towards the end of this year. All right, yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah, so think of, think of areas in your community, maybe it's at your school or, um, you know, if there's uh, any your office, this might be a, a place to be part of that first initial push. All right. The system. Thanks very much. Thank you. We have two of our experts here from Cal OES on the earthquake early warning system, Christina Curry and Ryan Narva. Thanks, you guys. Thanks appreciate Sean. it. Thank Thanks, you. Sean. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to caloes.ca.gov and oesnews.com for all of the latest information that we've just been talking about here. Have a good one.